But does anybody not want to be on a bus full of singing Sound of Music fans? <laughs> now is definitely a good time to get off because that will happen. We have quite the chorus up the back. Um, the, uh, the very back is not... The ones are getting off at Nontal, unfortunately, you won't get a lot of the music. Sorry, guys, that starts a bit after. But um, the rest of us will be singing our way. Round the block um, to make sure there's nobody else missing. While we do so, let me introduce you to Austria. No, actually, it's Europe. No, actually, I think it's the world now. Best bus driver in the world. It's quite a title. Yeah. Yeah. His name is Nicky. And Nikki is going to take very good care of you today. Um, he's not only a great bus driver, he's, got, he's a bartender as well. So at the second step, as I said, we will be selling some drinks as well. Um, and my name is Kylie. And Kylie. depending on your generation, either like Minogue or Jenna, depending on how old you are, that's how you remember it. Um, very Australian name because yes, I am very Australian. <laughs> I brought my own cheer squad today by the looks of it. <laughs> um, I've been living back here in Austria since about August last year. I left Australia in February on a bit of an eat, play, love, gap year kind of reset, if you know what I mean. And just didn't go back. Um, decided to stay here. Since about August I travelled for the first bit of time. The reason I ended up over this side of the world is because 34 years ago I was an exchange student in Austria for one year. I went to school here after high school in Australia, lived the rest of my life in Australia, but then my four children didn't just leave the house when they finished school, they left the country and they all, four of them, moved to the Northern Hemisphere. So over here I'm a lot closer to them all. So I've got one in Switzerland, one in London, one in Washington DC, and one in Salt Lake City now. So. Here I'm kind of in the middle, they like where I live, so they tend to be happy to visit as well, which is good. So that's why I'm here. While I'm here, I thought I'd live out a dream that I always had when I was a bit younger and thought, how fun would it be to be a sound of music tour? I am from the Sunshine Coast in Australia, so now we have the Sunshine Salzburg. If you've been here for a little while, over the last few days, you'll have seen we've had all sorts of temperatures from 36 degrees to 16 degrees. It's all over the place, um, but it's quite comfortable this afternoon for us, which is good. So we'll just see if there's anyone chasing the bus as we run past here. Doesn't look like it. All right, bye bye. Okay, so we've got the all clear, let's go. So, how's the afternoon going to work? We are going to be making a couple of stops in the city. Then we uh, will be driving past a few filming sites and stopping at two of them. And then we will be heading out into the Lakes District because very lucky for all of us today, none of the 43 churches in Salzburg would let them film the wedding scene inside. While we're driving, I'll tell you a bit about Salzburg, a bit about the making of the movie, and of course, um, the real Von Trapp family story. So in case you didn't know, it is based on a true story, Sound of Music. Um, and then housekeeping, when we uh, get off the bus, please all take the same seats when you get back on because it makes it much easier for us to see who's missing if anybody is. When you get off the bus, you may also leave whatever you don't need on the bus. It's not, you don't have to take everything with you, just take your camera. We only walk about five minutes um, each stop, so it's not a big walk. If you've got little kids with strollers, just so you know, it's only uh, four or five minutes, so it's not a long way, but you can grab the stroller if you need it, of course. Having mobile phone conversations on the bus while we're traveling and everyone's trying to listen to me. All right. hand side now our first in the Mirabel Gardens and I'll show you where that is on the right hand side the only Protestant church out of those 43 churches I mentioned earlier um, one Protestant church so it's a very Catholic city it was founded by Catholic monks on the left hand side is the Mozarteum Music Academy 
they study around 1500 degrees in the, uh, 1500 <laughs> students, no, there's about 1500 students in there, 45 degrees. After that, we had the Marionette Theatre, which inspired the Lonely Goat Herd and our State Theatre as well. If we look through to the left, you'll see the yellow building, the Yellow Hotel Bristol. That is where Christopher Plummer stayed during filming, who played the captain. And on our right hand side, we've got the Hotel Sacha, which is where Julie Andrews stayed with her 18 month old daughter, Emma. So Julie was 29 during filming and Christopher was 35 years old. Now Christopher is also a, was a classically trained pianist and he um, loved playing the piano in the foyer of the hotel in the evenings, often being watched and adored by one of the other female cast members who later admitted quite a crush on Christopher um, during filming. So lucky she wasn't actually 16 going on 17 though. She was 21 going on 22, and that was Charmian Carr who played Liesel. She used to hang out there with Christopher in the evenings. The other children were in the Sheraton Hotel and with their mothers and their governesses who continued their studies while they were here. In front of us we have the beautiful old town of Salzburg, UNESCO Heritage listed since 1997 the most well-preserved old town north of the Alps. We start up on the right over there, we've got the Museum of Modern Art. You can take a lift inside the mountain up there and walk around the city walls at the top. That is where they skipped along in Do Re Mi when they were up high in the city. Also in the old town, have a walk through there because it's one, it's very beautiful. Two, there's a few filming sites in there. Um, we just can't take the bus in, it's mostly pedestrian. So you can wander around in there, there is the horse fountain that she splashed water up of the horse's face during I Have Confidence. We also had the horse, were there at two o'clock every day. And the cemetery that inspired the scene for the hiding behind the tombstones right at the end. That's the St. Peter's Cemetery, which is up the back near the entrance to the Vernicular Railway. You can go and have a wander through that, it's very beautiful. And on our left hand side now, you can see this bridge going over the Salzach River. That is the Mozart Bridge. Mozart was also born in Salzburg, um, which is a Re Me bridge because they skipped over there in their play clothes. Um, they stopped on the other side, they looked over at the side of the river, and um, then they skipped along the banks as well. So they skipped along the banks of the river here at the Salzach in the city. The Salzach means salt river if we translate it to English but not because the water is salty, it's because they used to transport the salt from the mines down the river uh, before they built the railways. So Salzburg, salt is salt, Salzburg means salt fortress or salt castle. On the side now we have the big green dome at the top. We're not looking at that because the one behind it is the one that's important to us, the red one. The little red dome up there is the dome of the Nonberg Abbey Church. Nonberg Abbey is where Maria was a novice nun both the real Maria and the building on the right hand side is a very wealthy history with salt mining in the area but they also mined gold, silver, nickel and bronze. Salzburg was founded in 696 by Archbishop Rupert who came along and discovered this land on the ruins uh, that from the Roman Empire and he built the first Catholic monastery here. They stayed an independent church state all the way through till 1816, which is when they first joined Austria. Population of Salzburg is around 150,000, about a million tourists a year. And how's this for a fun fact? Over a third of them, over a third of the tourists that come to this city are still because of the sound of music. 60 years later. Next year is the 60th anniversary of the Sound of Music movie. It was released in 1965. So it's quite incredible. I don't know that any other movie could bring that much tourism to a city where it was filmed 60 years after being filmed. But here we are. Maybe in years to come, they'll have the same sort of thing in New Zealand for Lord of the Rings and Game of Thrones and those sorts of things. But um, at the moment, I think Sound of Music has certainly made quite an impact in that tourism market. So that makes it 60 years this year since they were here filming in 1964. The director Robert Wise brought 250 cast and crew over to Salzburg. They came for six weeks was the plan. They were filming in around two dozen locations, 
all outside locations only. All of the insides, the interiors, were all done on Hollywood sound stages in Los Angeles, except for the wedding, which was filmed inside the church that we are going out to see later. Everything else, um, though, on the Hollywood sound stages. They modeled the interior sets after the insides of the palaces here. Um, so they are very similar looking, they just didn't film them inside. Which, in hindsight for them, might have been something they could have done in the end, because while they came for six weeks, they hadn't taken into account that Salzburg had the seventh highest rainfall in the world, and they were here during the rainy season. So they got so much bad weather, it took them 11 weeks to get the shots that they needed. So it blew out the budget a little bit. 20th Century Fox was already under extreme financial pressure because they'd just um, blown out their budget filming Cleopatra with Elizabeth Taylor and Richard Burton. And uh, they were hoping for a much quick, quicker... Uh, How good can it be? You can just do it on a green screen. He said, not this one. And that was the opening scene where she spins around on the hills for the hills are alive with the sound of music. He dug in his heels and said, we're not coming home until we have that. They sent home all the rest of the cast and crew they didn't need, but they kept Julie here, of course. Um, they finally got that shot and everyone moved out the very next day. They filmed um, in Salzburg, but also very much in the Lakes District. And you'll notice if you watch it next time, the opening credits takes in a lot of different shots of scenery from helicopters going over the lakes. Just on the right now, you'll see the Nondo Gabby down the bottom, the Red Dome, and the beautiful view of the back of the fortress here. We're going to come back this way as well, so everyone on the left of the bus will get an, um, a view on the way back. The pretty spectacular one. So before they got here, in 1964, they had already been rehearsing for three months and they laid down the entire soundtrack in that time. Um, so they knew all the songs, they were ready to go, and they had the recordings ready for the playback whilst, while they were filming over here. Altogether, it took nine months to make the movie. And nine months with children, um, you'll realize, of course, presented a few challenges with them growing, such as little Marta, played by Debbie Turner, losing her baby teeth and they needed to make false teeth for her so that she had teeth all the way through the movie um, and it was consistent. And Friedrich grew six inches and it was much taller than Liesel. So you'll notice that some of the shots of the children when they're in their lineup. Uh, um, yes. When they came to scout locations in Salzburg, they knew they wanted to film here, of course, if it was set here, the real story was set here, the real Von Trapp family did live here in Salzburg. They have the villa in the suburb called Eigen, the suburb of Salzburg. It is still there today. We're not going to go and see it though because it wasn't in the movie. They decided it wasn't quite Hollywood enough. After World War II, the Von Trapps uh, passed it on to a religious order who converted it to a sanctuary who, um, which it still is um, run as today and you can't see it very much from the street anyway it is all covered with trees at the front so they set about looking for a different alternative and they chose two different palaces both of which we are going to see today one of them was used as the